that's the foot controls out of the way we've spoke about the accelerator the gas pedal sorry the brake and the clutch any questions at all on any of that no no okay so i was just going to say this is i forgot to mention this is a non-judgmental lesson any questions no matter how simple please ask away all right feel free to interrupt all right so that's it okay that's the foot controls out of the way we're going to move on to the hand controls we'll start off with the handbrake what's the purpose of the handbrake is it to stop the car from like, driving off Rolling. rolling yeah. yeah, it's to stop the car from rolling. So how does this operate? Any, any ideas? You press I don't want you to become a mechanic overnight, but just <laughs> just some basics. Go on. You press the button, button in. and you press it down. Okay, but what's the mechanics behind it? That's what I'm getting at. We'll, we'll have a go at putting this down and shortly, but what's the mechanics? What's it connected to? That's the first question. Is this connected to your front wheels? Is it connected to the rear wheels? Or is it connected to all four? No. <laughs> it's the rear okay. it's connected to the rear so basically okay the handbrake is a cable operated mechanism so what it is is it's a very strong cable that runs under the car and it connects the rear wheels now when you put the handbrake up it locks the wheels in place okay. so your wheels won't move you got it yeah. when you release the handbrake those cable the cable gets slack gets loose and the car is able to move so it's okay. cable operated now you just said to me press the button in and release it I am going to put my foot on the brake pedal. Okay. Can you do me a favour so the car won't roll? Have a go at releasing that. Let's have a look. Like... Not happening. No. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's all right. So Can what it is is. No, 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 no. It's not that. It's nothing to do with that. The only reason I had my foot on the brake. Look, I've got my foot on the brake. The handbrake still goes down. There is a specific technique for releasing the handbrake, and I'm going to tell you that now. What it is, is it's child safe. And also, imagine something accidentally presses this, the handbrake's designed not to go down. You have to press the button in, thickness of a credit card. Look at this, look, it only goes in a little. How much does it go in? No, only goes in a little, but then you've got to pull the handbrake up. It's almost as if, I want you to imagine you're picking up a heavy carrier bag, off the floor, made loads of shopping. You pick that up and then the button will go in all the way. So button in a little, up, then the button's gone in and now down. Okay. Can you see that? And then I'll press the button in again, not to wear the teeth out and then to lift it up. So what I'm gonna do, have another go. So this time, press the button in only a little, good, and pull the handbrake up. There, better, press the button in and lift it up again. Are we happy with that? Yeah. You all right with that, yeah? So button in, up, down. I want you to do that two, three times just for demonstration purposes because surely you will be doing that anyway. Pull up. Pull up. Remember that heavy bag. So the button's only going to go in a little bit, but you ain't pulling up. Okay, watch. Let me show you. Rest your hand. So button in yeah. and I want you know your elbow. Yeah. Imagine your elbow is going up. Look, okay. look at my elbow. I'm going to do this. Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah. I want you to imagine some button in and look at my elbow. It's almost like I'm trying to pull. This is the this is the bit you're not doing. Okay. Try it again. So button in a little pull up. There we go. There, that's it. Okay. And make sure you have your Weetabix before the lesson. Yeah? yeah. You're gonna have big muscles like Popeye after this. <laughs> all right okay so you're happy with that yeah. we will practice more with a handbrake so remember the button presses in just a little thickness of a credit card pull up aim for the elbow to just almost go up and then down that's it so that's the handbrake again it's connected to the rear wheels of the car and it stops the car from rolling yeah uh, and it secures the car that, uh, and obviously releases it yeah so that's the handbrake right next we are going to talk about the gears so these are the gears what gear is that now currently neutral yeah that's a zero gear that's the gear we start the car in. So always make sure it's in neutral, that way the car won't jump forwards. So what do you understand about the gears? What are the gears? One, two, three, four, five. They're at different at miles per Good, they're the different speeds of the car. Good answer. So they're the different speeds. So I'll ask you a few questions. Out of one to five, what is the slowest gear on the car? Is it one? Good, definitely, yeah. So one is the slowest gear on the car. What is the fastest gear on the car? Good answer. Okay, we're now going to go by two more questions. What is the strongest gear on the car? Is it? Mm -hmm. 
Wait, does the army reverse? Uh, ignore reverse for now. Just one to five. What is the strongest gear? Four. Four. Okay, so if four is the strongest, what is the weakest? One. One. Okay, so you think four is the strongest and one is the weakest. No, five is the strongest. And one okay, five is the strongest, yeah. So five is the strongest and one is the weakest. Okay, I want you to flip that the other way. It's actually one. One's fastest. The strongest. The strongest. So one is the slowest gear, yeah. but the strongest. So, so I want you to think about an elephant. One is elephant. Wallet one is an elephant gear. Yeah. An elephant in the jungle or out wherever, it's very strong, but it's slow. Yeah. Am I right, yeah? So one is an elephant gear. So in order to move the car off um, now, you need a very powerful gear because the car weighs like a ton. Okay, to get the car moving, you need a very powerful, strong gear. That's one. So it's slow but strong. Five is by far the fastest, but it's the weakest because as you go through the gears, they go weaker and weaker and weaker. Okay. But five is like a leopard or a cheetah. So it's fast, but it's weak. Are we happy with that? You happy with that? So this is a bit of background information. Whenever we do use the gears, we always use the palm of your hand. So that's the palm of your hand. Yeah, we always use the palm of your hand and the palm of your hand should be away from your body. So basically that way you're not accidentally going into the wrong gear. So for example, if I wanted to go into one, I'm going to push my palm towards you and up. If I'm going into two, straight down. Can you see that? Yeah. I'm going into three, pushing forward. So the palm is always away from my body and that's the easiest way to synchronize the gears. Whenever we do do a gear change, we tend to hold the wheel a little tighter with our right hand and then gear change, hands back on the wheel, all right? So that's basically the basics of the gears. Today, you will be going into gears one yeah. and potentially two as well, depending how we do for time, okay? Any questions? Yeah. So anything on the handbrake, anything on the gears? You're happy with that? Okay, super. We'll move on to the steering wheel. What's the purpose of the steering wheel? What do you understand about it? To turn it. Yeah, it's to manoeuvre the car. car. Yeah, it's to manoeuvre the car. So a couple of couple of basic things. Whenever we operate the steering wheel, please do not grip it like you're about to strangle someone. You know, you know, I don't know. So like, you, hopefully you're not watching too many horror movies. Yeah. So that's it. So all I want you to do is just be a bit relaxed. I always say to my students, imagine you've opened the fridge at home, and you've taken two eggs out. So one egg in either hand, you just want to be nice and relaxed. You don't want to hold the eggs too tight that they're cracking your hands. Nice and steady, so just be a relaxed grip. Now, uh, quarter to three or 10 to two is the advisable, all right, grip. That way you've got good control of the car um, and you can kind of balance the car out whichever way you need to. Now, we do generally treat this like a clock. So if you're just, today's driving, you'll be driving a little bit like a racing driver where you'll be very subtle, not with the speed of the car, but more the speed of the steering wheel. You'll be doing this. Um, it's not even the speed of the steering wheel, sorry. It's, it's just the fashion in which you'll be steering. It'll be literally like this. Okay, but at a later date, we will be doing what we call pull, push. So you'll be pulling with one hand, pushing with the other. So you'll be pulling with one hand, pushing with the other. We call that the pull-push method. And you'll be doing that when it comes to junctions, when we're turning in and out of roads, you'll need to manoeuvre the car more. And that's it. But we treat this like a clock, so quarter to three, ten to two, however you find easy. Um, and if I ever need to reach for the wheel, I will avoid at all times trying to touch your hands. I will try to grab the wheel from here or here. Whatever you do, do not let go of the steering wheel. You're still in control of the car. Okay. Is that clear? So I'll grab the wheel here or there and that's that. Yeah. So uh, back to the pull push method. If I was going to do a left, I'd place my left hand at 12 and I'd pull down and push up. Can you see that? Yeah. And then I'll just do the same in reverse. Now if I was doing a right turn, just for extra leverage, I'd place my right hand at 12, pull, push and then in reverse to straighten the car. So that's the steering wheel. Um, and again, like I said, you'll only be steering a couple of minutes to left and right today to maneuver the car, okay? Now, any questions on the steering wheel? Super, so now um, we have got the indicators located on the left. So that's your indicators. Um, and whenever you do operate them, please do not take your hand off the steering wheel as that could result in loss of control on the steering wheel. Just extend your finger. So we need to do the longest finger, second finger, and that's it, signal down. Now it is a self-cancelling indicator. As soon as I steer a quarter on the steering wheel, it will cancel itself. Okay. Did you see that? You cancel, it's a design to, where it doesn't cancel itself, what you can do is you can softly cancel it the other way, the opposite. 
So whichever way you do it, softly pop it up, it will cancel itself. But most, uh, all cars are designed with self-canceling indicators. It's just motorbikes that haven't got this feature. All right, um, that pretty much draws a close to the steering wheel. Um, so, and obviously we spoke about the indicators. The last thing we need to discuss are the mirrors. So you've got three mirrors in your car, the top center and the wing mirrors, the left and right. What is the purpose of the mirrors? What's your understanding? The side ones, and see like people going past. Mm -hmm. See, so you mm -hmm. see any objects? <clears throat> you said people going past. Yeah, like any objects coming. Good, could be cyclists. Yeah, could even be I don't know someone. So it could, could be an animal. You never know. No, seriously, it could be like a wild animal running loose. You never know where you are. Okay, so it could even be a horse, anything at all. But yeah, any kind of activity. So it could be absolutely anything. Um, and the main idea of the mirrors is you're looking for activity, vehicles, pedestrians, cyclists, anything, any kind of a hazard that may cause us to kind of take some kind of action. So the center mirror will show you what's behind you. Yeah, yeah. internal mirror and the left and right respective wing mirrors will show you what's on either side of us. The one thing you will learn when driving is there is a um, the road changes every second and you need to continually be updating yourself with what's going on around you are we happy with that yeah. okay now there is a difference with the mirrors that's something i wanted to bring to your attention can you adjust this mirror so you can see what's behind you <coughs> so can you see at the back window yeah? yeah okay any one thing you can see in there that you can also see in there like maybe the van for example yeah i can see like the front of the van you can yeah. look at it in that if you look in the side mirror, what do you notice in terms of per perception and depth? There is a difference. Like this one's more wider. Wider? Yeah. Uh, what about distance? Yeah, potentially wider. Distance-wise, perception-wise, there is something else which you probably ain't... I'm not sure if you're picking 